flying. It's something many of us wish we could do. Diving like a peregrine falcon at speeds of over 300 kilometers per hour, or soaring the skies with the three meter wingspan of an albatross. But only certain types of animals can do it. And today, we're going to talk about the only group of mammals that can fly, bats. I know those guys seem to have a bit of a bad rep these days, but you'll soon discover just how extraordinary these creatures are and the important role they play in our everyday lives. Now, as a child, you were probably introduced to bats via the infamous vampire bats, those little bloodsuckers associated with Dracula. Well, there are more than a thousand other species. Bats make up 20% of all mammals. And because of that, they're everywhere, living on almost every continent, and they vary greatly in size and appearance. Take the flying fox, for example. This species has a wingspan of about a meter and a half, while the bumblebee bat, as its name suggests, has a wingspan of just 15 centimeters. You may be sensing a common theme here when I'm talking about all of these bats and bat species. They're wings. That's because bat wings are incredible, and not just because of the varying sizes. Now the easiest comparison to make is between bats and birds. While some birds are great at cruising flight, bats have the edge when it comes to maneuvering. And all that comes down to how bats' wings are built. The bone structure of bat wings is incredibly flexible. If you've ever watched a bat hunt an insect, you can see just how agile they are, almost like an aerial acrobat. Bats have similar bones that we humans have. Their arms consist of the same bones and joints as we do. An upper arm, an elbow, a lower arm, a wrist, and digits. That's right, they have a hand in their wings with fingers that actually support the wing. This allows for incredible precision and maneuverability. Bats have four elongated digits that they can flex and bend and a thumb that remains separate with a claw. Some use this claw for climbing or crawling while others use it to handle food. Connecting these limbs in the digits is a skin membrane called the patagium. That consists of two layers of epidermis and dermis that surround blood vessels, nerves, and tendons. Unlike our skin, which acts like a protective barrier, bat skin actually helps them move. Now, we usually don't associate skin as a way of generating movement, but this membrane is key to help bats perfect their maneuvering skills in flight. While flying seems pretty amazing to us, it's one of the most taxing ways of getting around. And this is true especially for bats. During flight, a bat's heartbeat can surge to over 1,000 beats per minute, and their body temperature can rise to more than 39 degrees Celsius. That's over 102 degrees Fahrenheit. For some animals, that might mean certain death, but not for bats. Researchers seem to think these stressors are what built the bat's superpower, their immune system. Bats are known to host some of the world's deadliest viruses, from rabies to Ebola, to even some coronaviruses, possibly even the virus that causes COVID-19. A bat's immune system responds differently than ours to these types of infections, preventing the animal from falling sick. And this research suggested that flight may be the reason why. It's believed that when bats evolved to fly, their energy metabolism was altered to adapt to the high energetic demands of flight. But this high metabolic rate can eventually damage their DNA, which can negatively impact their health. So to prevent this, bats have evolved mechanisms to lessen their immune response, resulting in bats not being affected by these diseases the same way we humans are. This makes them natural disease reservoirs, and because of this, they get a bad reputation. But they're crucial members to our world, and those little creatures need our help more than ever. Environmental threats like deforestation and wildlife trade are putting bat populations under enormous pressure, and in turn, this puts us in danger as well. We continue to infringe on their world by destroying their habitat, which in turn creates more opportunities for diseases to jump from one species to another. And like most of our natural world, we need bats. They play important roles in our ecosystems from pest controllers to pollinators. Thousands of plants rely on bats for pollination or to spread seeds. Some of our favorite fruits like mangoes, guava, and even avocados wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. The great part is that you can help, and the Wildlife Conservation Society has some great tips. It could be as easy as looking at your backyard or outside your window. And it doesn't matter if you live in downtown Manhattan or San Francisco or in the woods somewhere. You can help by doing what actually my wife and I have I've recently done, which is we've gotten rid of our lawn and we're replanting pollinators. For those who are not as, as fortunate as people like myself, just a 
boxed outside your window, native plants and starting to contribute to bringing back insects and the native flora and fauna of your area. You can do something that's very profound. Thanks for watching Seeker's new series, Tusk to Tales. I'm Evan Anton, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's an animal you want us to cover, leave us a comment. See you next time.